fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rhythm. Oh, he's got rhythm. Oh, he's got rhythm. Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the field's going to get full. Six is very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my oh god! God, what?! Hey everyone! The USF 2000 is a blast to drive now, and here's your chance to learn it quickly. From my tutorial, VRS created a free bonus track guide for the Laguna Seca circuit where you can learn exactly what I do in every corner to improve your lap times and get faster on track. You'll learn how to easily recognize brake markers. You'll find out which curves to attack and which ones to avoid. You'll know when to use the full track and when a sequence of corners requires a compromise. And you'll learn how hard to brake and when to lift. The VRS quick reference track maps are available free to download and delivered each week to your inbox. The entire Global MX-5 series is available, as well as bonus maps like this one and many more. So if you're a new racer, or a veteran, or just anyone who wants to learn how to get faster sooner, the VRS track guides are for you. Just hit the link or button on screen and get yours today. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another round of the Advanced Mazda MX-5 Cup Series Live here on SimSpeed TV. Tonight we head to the tight and technical but also pretty quick Alton Park circuit for an exciting 25 minutes of action in these brilliant hack racing cars. I'm Bo Albert and alongside me for tonight is Mr. David Haynes with Jay Kennedy in the director's chair behind the scenes as well. Practice is over and we are about to head into qualifying. The drivers get eight minutes over what is going to be an extremely short lap here at Alton Park, which is a circuit that requires quite a lot of bravery because quite simply, one mistake here and there is very little runoff at all. It's old school. It is proper racing how it all should be. No track limits should be in discussion at all. The fact here is if you run wide, you're in the grass, more than likely heading towards a wall. David, qualifying is underway at the moment. The driver's just starting their outlaps, but what do you think we're going to expect here tonight at Alton Park? Uh, probably a lot of what we saw similarly at Brands Hatch Indy a week ago. Both of them very right-hand turn dominated circuits. Both of them some relatively short straights, but these cars don't need a long straight to get a bit of passing done because they can really race very, very closely together. So I think what we're, what we're definitely going to see is a couple battle packs for all of the race duration. Maybe someone can, or a couple cars can break away in the lead, but there is definitely going to be battles all 25 minutes. Yep, there certainly is, as uh, the drivers are still getting ready for their first lap. Some of them just beginning to start their first lap. So while they do that, take a look at the championship standings. Now, this is after the, just the first round. So we are missing at Brands Hatch as well. But of course, you can see Roberto Ferrari was your points leader, doing a very good job at that point in time. So he isn't in this particular race tonight, but he is sure to be looking to extend that lead into the future rounds. Marcello Pagnan in position number two and Daniel Perry in position three as well. So it's still early days in the championship, all to play for. That's worth remembering as well that these drivers all get four drop rounds at the end of the season. So David, it really is all to play for for a long time in the season. Yeah, exactly. You you got to be in it all the way through, though, because some of those last weeks might not have the same strength of field as earlier rounds. You've got to do well uh, in the weeks that have a strong strength of field. This is one of the weeks that we're racing at a track that is included free content. And that, of course, means greater participation. More participation means a more stacked top split, so more points on offer. There was two splits this time of day a week ago at Brands Hatch, which is uh, a paid course, fourteen ninety five, but this one recently it feels like recently made free content. Everyone has it. Everyone has this car. So anyone with the license level uh, is eligible for this week's race, and that means we have seen 
quite a couple more drivers and this should be even closer even more action-packed than a week ago yes absolutely and of course you always expect when we come to mazdas we're going to get some close racing as some of our drivers finish their lap times bradley vaughan comes across the line his previous lap was a 1067 needs to get a fast lap though if he's going to challenge dave chapman who has got our provisional pole position he's on his second lap as we go to ivan pinocchio at the moment in position well he's car number eight is he going to be position number eight at the end of his lap or can he get the order just a little bit more? It's a 106, and that is good enough to put him all the way up to position number four. So a great job there from the number eight car, as uh, he will look to uh, try and improve over the course of the race. And you can expect a lot of passes. So qualifying isn't super important in these Mazdas, but nonetheless, these drivers still want to make sure they get a good lap in the end of qualifying. Edward Leto comes across the line on 106.2. Very competitive up to third there. Second row of the grid as our pole sitter dips now into the 105. So some very quick lap times around what is essentially an extremely short circuit. Yeah, and of course, with the short lap means you only get a couple laps, very, very short opportunity to put in your qualifying time. Uh, you go out of pit lane and then it's all over very, very quickly. So to switch on and immediately deliver and also switch on the tires to deliver as well is uh, one thing that will challenge quite a few of our drivers and this is open setup unlike the rookie Mazdas so you might see a couple of different rear roll bar settings for example you might see some cars that are a, a lot more driving on the nose and some that look a little bit more planted Yes, indeed. So setups are going to be very important for some of these drivers, especially around a short lap where, you know, driver skill maybe doesn't allow you to get the most out of yourself because, of, the, of course, it is such a short lap that drivers are always going to be very close regardless. Go down to Shono Goto at the moment and we'll see what he can do in car number 18 at the moment. Got a good lap going at the moment in position number nine, but can he improve on that? No, he's not because it's currently lap number three for him. So he will be continuing on for the next little while trying to get a bit more uh, experience but none of his lap times will be counting Teroku Kato at the moment in car number four is on his second lap though tires up to temp for the number four car we'll see what he can do as he goes over the rise and then into this very fast section of the track where these masters are going to be holding a very high average speed 135 kilometers an hour minimum corner speed drifts the car out a little bit of a slide as he goes under the car loop banner there then into the very last braking zone if you know your delta is up you're so nervous into that final braking zone making sure you don't do, uh, don't ruin it the teruaki there Make sure he gets it absolutely perfectly. He's a 106.6 is his fastest lap so far. His second lap is a 106.1. Jumps up to the second row of the grid. And for a driver of car number four, when there's 23 cars in the field, you want to be in that top half. If you're a, a low number and you're deep in the field, that doesn't bode particularly well, and you could be losing some eye rating if you don't have the pace here. When you look at the track map, for this place it kind of just looks like a square but when you see the way the drivers are, are taking it and you can see the elevation on the exit of so many of these corners deceives we saw at the final corner there you've got to try to take a shallow exit because immediately the track drops away and tries to force you wide and the corner before there sort of double apex and the track rises and then drops away again on the exit as well so these are all corners that try to deceive you and what from a bird's eye view from a satellite it would look like a pretty easy track just tempts you to take too much risk too much and then as you mentioned right at the very start of the broadcast will punish you pretty heavily just for those little transgressions yes indeed you need to make sure you're staying on the circuit at all times because this is a track that will punish you if you get it even slightly wrong i do think all our drivers have completed all their laps though so Everyone on track at the moment is just purely here for experience and experience is going to be pretty crucial because braking zones will be tricky to pass around here. So I think if you're going to make any kind of move around here, it is going to have to be a move uh, using the slipstream down a straight, get the advantage that way as the drivers are still just lapping around and uh, making sure they know exactly what they are capable of. I love when we have these eight minute two lap sessions on a short track where everyone can get their outlap and their flying laps done with no dramas in the allowed time for the qualifying and there's always someone who stays out on track just 
uh, with their lap times not counting, but just using it as an extra warm-up session, uh, maybe a little bit of extra practice if they didn't uh, get much in earlier in the week in the last couple of days when the schedule flicked across to week three. So I always, I always love that. And you've got drivers who've used up all of their allowed flying laps, but they don't immediately get kicked off the track. So they get all of their money's worth. <laughs> Absolutely. They're uh, definitely making the most of it and good on them as well. But sadly, their time will come to an end as the checkered flag does fly after some eight minutes here in qualifying. Definitely didn't need eight minutes. But hey, if they've got eight minutes, use every damn second. But they will now begin to line up for the next two minutes onto the starting grid. There is 23 cars going to find their way into turn one in a few moments time. And they're all led away by Dave Chapman. Car number two, but very much position number one. He's done a great lap. The only one in the fives is definitely the favorite here tonight. But Bailey Fred on the front row, going to make sure he works for it the entire way through. Taroki Kato in position number three. They will line up with Ivan Pinocchio in position number four. Jean-Robert Delacorte, we saw him in round number one have a little bit of misfortune. He's hoping for a much better result here in round number three. Edward Leto on the third row of the grid with the Yatsuta Asharuiya in uh, position number seven ahead of Bradley Vaughan, Kobe Laszlo, and Shono Goto rounds out our top ten. Remainder of the field then is Togo Hisada, Hayati Asaga, Darren Chun. Uh, Kadir Dogen, Matteo Richter, Atsushi Une, uh, Aramasad Nersisian, uh, Rafael Aliasoyo, Piotr Jigalivitsky, Thomas Tr Berling, <laughs> Naoki Oshiva, Zavi Pla, and Keith Wheeler. That was, oh, I, I've got the Japanese names down. That was one that was going to stop me there. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm much happier as you rather than me because these. Uh, not always the easiest uh, for us to get down, of course. Um, we're always uh, learning some new names and different pronunciations. So if we do get something wrong, be sure to email us and let us know because there are so many times we have found out we are saying the totally wrong thing. It's all about learning and we love that part of commentary. It's a challenge and sometimes it makes it all the more fun for us to learn as well. But it is just 10 seconds left for these drivers before they will get ready to launch themselves into turn number one here at Alton Park. It's the short layout, but there is no shortage of action. The revs are going to start rising for these global masters, and in a few seconds' time, it is going to be lights out. And away we go. It's a great start there for our pole sitter. He's got a great launch ahead of Bailey Fried. All even Stevens for your front few. There is a few drivers getting slow starts in the mid-pack, but for the most part, Everyone doing very well. A few side-by-side -side moments return number one. Plenty of runoff, though. So you can't afford contact, though, for two of them. Bradley Vaughn is almost up and over, almost rejoins into the field as he made contact there. The number three car, big contact there for Bradley Vaughn. And his race is immediately over and done. Big content, uh, contact there with Keith Wheeler. Yeah, contact in that sort of runoff area at turn one, and then the rejoin was messy as well. I suspect the suspension was well out of sorts after the first impact. So a shame for a couple of cars, but one of our best launches off the standing start was Edward Leto, who's now up into fifth. He must have just found the bite point on the clutch. You've got a pretty short first gear, and that helps you really get away well off a standing start in these cars. Yes, indeed. So a lot of different techniques, but also different types of passes for the lead as Bailey Fred looks for it. Can't quite complete the pass, though, but his intentions have very much been made clear as Dave Chapman was our pole sitter. He starts in position number one. He's going to be position number one at the end of lap number one, but there is so much longer to go. We're looking at some 22 more laps in this race, so don't count your chickens before the hatch just yet as everyone looks to be nice and content at the moment through the opening few corners on lap number two. No one's going super aggressive for moves. Do you go back to Togo Hosada though? He was looking for a move there up the inside of Kobe Laszlo into the super fast section. Wasn't quite able to do it, but these drives in the mid pack, as we always expect, being a lot punchier than those at the front, as I'm just seeing Aramasad uh, Aramas in car number 17 actually off the road as well. And that was a big loss through the grass. He's going to rejoin the circuit as his uh, Kadir Dogon as well in car number 10. So a few drivers uh, towards the back of the field, just struggling in his open few sections. As we do have an exchange for the race lead going on at the moment. As they're going to go side by side into the final corner. Bailey Fred and Dave Chapman. You saw Bailey Fred on the last lap. Think about a move. He's looking in a much better position this time around up the inside. And he will lead at the end of lap number two. 
Yeah, Chapman hesitated around the outside, wasn't sure if he should try to hold it there, but there's been a bit of drama deeper in the field. Good move by Frid, but around about 7th, 8th, 9th, I think that was, we've seen a bit of uh, panels exchanged. Yes, indeed. Plenty of drivers getting their elbows out early on. We're on board at the moment with our number four car working their way through. That is Teroki Arkato at the moment. You get a good idea of the elevation change around this circuit and how hard these drivers are working and too hard. They will work as contact from the rear. 360 the car around. But sadly, style points are not going to matter as he's going to go around for a second time. A clumsy little incident there, unfortunately. Just a lot of cars in the wrong places. One off in the grass on the outside and one trying to go the other way. It was always going to be tight. And sadly, there's another car off in the background as well. Nyaki Yashibi uh, in the 21 car. So some of these drivers having a lot of unlucky moments early on. As our leaders, no such bad luck at the moment. But it has meant our top two have broken away a little bit from position number three sort of clumsy for third you've seen a couple of times that between first and second they're giving each other just enough space because they don't want to be involved in an accident but some of the cars behind they're a little more frantic a little less patient we've seen contact made and it's always difficult when we've got drivers from asia drivers from australia drivers from uh, from europe all trying to race against each other in this time slot it's great that we've got drivers from all around the world but it does lead to its own unique challenges it certainly does, but that's one of the things we love in sim racing. There's no limitations. Anyone can race anybody. It is a definitely an inclusive sport where everyone can compete on an equal playing field, and that is some of the things we absolutely love. Sometimes, of course, latency and other things do get in the way, but sometimes it does create some brilliant moments as we will go to a virtual racing school replay and just take a look at some of the moments that have happened so far in this race. Go back to the start of the race, and this was the big one. We saw contact here for Bradley Vaughan, I believe it was, and just a little bit of a contact with the car on the inside of him and uh, totally out of control, still trying to gather it up properly and you can see the car was not reacting nicely. And just a big, big vicious head on there into the other car as well. So none of those drivers having any favours done early on and sadly Keith Wheeler did end up retiring from that. So what we might do is go for an onboard look here of the incident and David, there is not much you can do when the car spins right in front of you. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot of brake lights out of the 15 from the two angles we've seen there as well. I mean, the smoke, uh, pretty as it is, uh, doesn't help in that situation either. Unfortunate, narrow track, Armco close to either side. Who is impressing me, though, is a couple of the drivers we've seen charging up through the field. So Hayata Asaga is up seven, and uh, Chevy Pla up 13 positions from right at the very back of the grid. Is he the one who made the pit lane start? Was someone who made a pit lane start. Well, if it was Jevy, then he has done an absolutely phenomenal job to go that far up the order. We'll just take a quick look back and have a see if I can find out if he was. But either way, that is a lot of progress to have been made in a very short amount of time as we go side by side through a very quick section of the track. The 22 tried to hang tough, wasn't quite able to do it though, so that will have to continue on into the next few corners. Contact in the background. And yet again, drivers in the fence. We're seeing a lot of this in today's race, which is always a shame to see. But uh, the driver's just getting punchy on what is, in effect, a very narrow circuit. Go back up to our leaders, though, because Bailey Frid, as we would expect in MX5s, of course, always a pack racing car. Cannot escape Dave Chapman. And Ivan Panaccio, at the moment, has done a phenomenal job to uh, have been outside of the draft range. To clawing her back, clawing her back. And he is well and truly in the fight now. Notwithstanding, you might have helped one of the other cars around earlier. It's always tough to cast judgment on that one, and there was really not a lot in it in that particular braking zone. But it obviously hasn't damaged uh, Ivan Pinocchio's car, because he is, as you say, right with first and second, helped by this kind of defensive stuff from Bailey Frid this early in the race. Also, I had a look. It was Burling who made the lane start. Okay, so Burling made the start. Still at five spots, though, so either more. Still very impressive to have gone from that all the way up to his position at the moment. But we're going to go side by side once again between Dave Chapman, who is late on the brakes around the outside. Bailey Frid going to try and hold on to it. But I think on the outside, oh, a little bit of door banging there as we go downhill at some 170 kilometers an hour in these MX-5s. The inside not going to work for Dave Chapman, but they're still going to try and hold on again on the outside goes Dave Chapman. And he still has overlap. Now look at the run Ivon has. They're all 
trying to play for keeps for the race lead on just lap number seven. How about we go two by two? Is this the Daytona 500 or is it MX5s at Alton Park? This is phenomenal racing between all of these drivers. And I think unbelievably, after being on the outside for so many corners in a row, Dave Chapman may just pull off one of the longest around the outside passes I think I've ever seen. It's ridiculous. Those two are slowing each other up. Pinocchio got a run at them, but then he had nowhere to go. So Jean-Robert Delacourt had a run at him and has gotten up to third. The amount of time that they kind of start losing when they battle side by side like that. It's the kind of thing I'd say for the last five laps, not with 16 laps to go. So they really, uh, really want to get stuck into this one. Get a lot of laps in a 25 minute race around here and they're using every single one of them. No patience on display for the lead. No, not at all. They, have, they came here to fight, and they're going to do just that, which is great to see. It makes it very entertaining for us as Ivan gets into the back there of Jean-Robert Delacourt. Of course, I remember commentating on Jean-Robert Delacourt in round number one at Spa. Very aggressive driver. Wasn't afraid to get his elbows out, but clearly Ivan here is not uh, afraid to get his elbows out either. So two very aggressive drivers battling it out, and only one of them will get a podium position at the end of it all. So this little battle here for P number three is one to watch if Jean Robert does not run too deep into that particular corner. Gives a great advantage on the inside to Ivan as they're going to go side by side as it is for the race lead as well. Once again, it's two by two. Bailey Fruit up the inside for your race lead. He's just about going to get the move done, but sadly doesn't get the clearance on exit. So Dave Chapman on the outside gets much better bite and purchase out of the rear tires, gets the traction, gets the overlap, then he's on the outside once again. It's a complete repeat here, Div uh, David. Yeah, this is not a VRS replay. This is just them doing the same thing again. Chapman, happy around the outside. Bailey Frid going to play it a little bit closer, potentially, and they are getting so close to disaster. And once again, this battling costs them big time because Hayata Asaga from fifth was the fastest driver on the circuit that time. He's catching third and fourth. They're catching first and second. It's still side by side. And Sean Ogoso is going to join the picture as well. This could be six for the lead. It absolutely could be. Look at this as up the inside. Bailey Fried will go, but so many times we've seen the outside actually get phenomenal traction. And once again, the slight overspeed is there for Dave Chapman. But I think the overlap is going to continue into the braking zone here for Bailey. So this has been quite literally an entire lap side by side. And tell you what, they look pretty comfortable doing it. So this may not be the one and only lap. They will go side by side. This could just become the racing line for them at this point in time. Bailey Frid up the inside once more. Goes really late on the brakes. Almost clears contact between the two. More door banging as they stay on the circuit. It's hard. Fair, aggressive racing for the lead on lap number 10. There's still 14 minutes to go, but they don't care. It is all or nothing at the moment. It's finally Dave Chapman to the lead, but look how many Mazdas this is brought into the fray. P6 is now in the train. It cost them so much time. That last lap for the lead is a 1 minute 8. Two seconds off their best times. Two seconds on a track that basically only has four corners. They were losing half a second every corner, trying to go side by side, trying to make a, you know, US Navy air display out of it with <laughs> these guys. And you saw exactly how much it helped Pinocchio, Delacort, Asaga, and Goto get right back in this picture, right back in this fight. Six cars for the lead when first and second had a breakaway on lap three. Absolutely. I mean, so many times you'd think in an MX-5 race, if you can break away from the pack behind, you're gone. You're not getting caught. But the fact is that the top two got caught and then the top four got caught. They're all willing to fight so much. It's brilliant to see. And it is little packs of two forming at the moment as the top two of Fruit and Chapman try and break away once more from Pinocchio and Delacour behind as they work their way through this fast left hand hard onto the brakes. And a lot of body language there going on for Ivan Pinocchio who gets the car just a little sideways and cost him some momentum. But no place is lost, just a bit of time as uh, Hayata Saga is looking very aggressive at the moment. Car number one, so plenty of experience and pace. And here, he's a MX-5, so what can he do now that he's on the tail of this battle, as well as Shono Goto as well, who started position 10, Hayata Asaga in position 12. So some big movers and shakers, even in this lead, lead group. 19 cars on the lead lap, 16 of them are in a battle of some kind. 
this is what you hope for in advanced MX-5 racing, and it's what we are getting. First and second just starting to get away, and now it's all about third, fourth, fifth, sixth here, and driver like Sean Ogotto, car number 18, battling for a podium position. Uh, this could be a good points haul and also a good iRacing pay rating payday. Yep, absolutely. Some of these drivers, of course, MX-5s are the cars that everyone has to learn their, you know, uh, iRacing uh, driving style and race craft in. It is the car everybody at some point has had to drive. And, uh, you know, some of them choose to not drive it for very long. Others choose to drive it for a long time. Jonah Goto doesn't have the highest I rating in this field, but definitely a lot of talent and a lot of potential as well. If he can pull some more top sixes uh, his way as Hayata Saga thinks about up the inside of Delacour, but on the grass is always risky business, decides to just sit behind for another few corners and I just play a little bit safer. So currently, there are 12 minutes on the clock. We're looking at roughly 11 laps remaining as well. So plenty of time to race uh, still left going on. But I do think at the moment for now, touch wood, our leaders maybe just settle down just a touch. It's funny how it's 25 minutes wherever we go, but 25 minutes of Spa somehow feels a little shorter because it's only, what, seven eight laps or something it was around here we're getting 24 laps into our short little race and if they're going to battle every time into turn one then it it makes 25 minutes feel a lot longer because they are packing non-stop uninterrupted every corner action into that time slot yes absolutely as we might just go to a virtual racing school replay because we've got some drivers fighting side by side and we've got some drivers hard into the inside wall that is the number 10 car we saw him have troubles a little bit earlier in this race as well hitting the outside wall and i mean if you're going to hit the outside wall you may as well make it even steven and go for the inside wall as well so he's two for two and sadly i think also out of this race with many many uh damaged panels on his car and he's not particularly happy about it either on the in-game voice chat so uh, unfortunate end to their race there there's still plenty of battles happening throughout the field as we go back to hiyata asaga who i would say does look quicker than delacour at the moment who isn't really staying with uh ivan pinocchio in front of him so ivan last lap around did a 1059 actually the quickest car on track was ivan whereas uh delacour was some uh eight tenths of a second slower so this pace just wasn't there for delacour and you can see that because Hayata Asaga is so much closer and more aggressive behind his rear bumper right now as he looks for a move, which, you know, normally I would say there's not many overtaking opportunities here at Alton Park. It's a bit of a one-line circuit, but with the racing we've seen so far tonight, there are plenty of opportunities for Asaga to try and make a move happen. And we're coming up to the section now, David, where the passes are most likely. I even saw him giving a bit of a bump draft. Uh, a, a minute ago I mean that's the sort of sort of behavior that says uh, I'm being polite here but I want you to get up and battle with that top three otherwise you're going to leave with no option but to, to give it a big send absolutely as our race lead has exchanged hands there you can see Bailey Frid now ahead of Chapman as a saga does manage to get ahead there of Delacour so a nice little pass there up the inside but what kind of pace does he have now because the draft has been lost to your podium uh, running cars at the moment so if a saga is going to hunt them down they either have to battle or a saga really has to somehow put his foot down and make up a lot of time because the car in front for a saga was a 106.3 that is rapid pace from Pinocchio at the moment you would have to say is maybe looking like a bit of a favorite at the moment with the pace he has been running very consistently whereas Chapman and Frid seem more content rather than doing lap times just to fight each other we saw Frid uh, get back to the lead recently, so it's still kicking off between these two. And you see Frid now, he's in the lead, trying to make sure he just covers off whatever Chapman is going to do. And this puts Pinocchio in the very interesting position of just watching those two in front. And he's seen earlier in this race that if they battle, and they go side by side through a corner, and he's clever, he might be able to get a run at them, a real, real solid run, and swallow up both of them. Yep, absolutely. There is... I just I just can hear the, the, the cogs turning for the driver in third. <laughs> no, absolutely. There's lots to think about. But at the moment, all that Bailey Fruit is thinking about is how does he defend this exit from Dave Chapman, who looks so much quicker. Not able to do anything with it, though, so we'll have to sit behind for at least the next few corners 
but what I am noticing is traffic not far away at all. We have the drivers of Kobe Laszlo and Edward Leto just up the road. So plenty to play for is a shocking exit there for Dave Chapman. Contact! He'll get forced off into the grass. He should manage to maintain position and to stay in the draft there of uh, Ivan Panaccio. But what that has done is allowed Hayata Asaga now to get into the draft of Chapman. So uh, a bit of a turning point in this race. It's not over by any stretch. Ivan Panaccio should be able to hunt down Bailey Fred and continue this battle for the race lead. But what it has done, it just brought in a lot more cars into this battle as Delacour thinks about making a move on a saga. Can't quite do it. So Saga defends that position and will hold on for the next few corners. But this uh, race for the lead has got settled down a little bit for the moment. But just when the race settles down, traffic coming up. Can't flash the headlights in these cars, can you, Bo? Oh, I really wish you could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same, uh, to be honest. <laughs> To be honest, if you could, in Fritz's position, you would be just going mental for that because you don't want any of those drives to to block you out for just half a second because that immediately throws you to the wolves, the hungry, hungry wolves lining up behind. Pinocchio uh, charging up through the field. Chapman are looking for revenge and Hayata Asaga, who's been the dark horse uh, in this one. Yes, absolutely. Just uh, being sort of staying in the background and uh, not really going too aggressive at all in this race so far, but I mean, if there's any time to get aggressive, the six minute mark left in this race is probably a good time to do it, as Chapman has been reeling in Pinocchio. So Pinocchio has been very quick with the draft, but when he doesn't have the draft, maybe Chapman is the car to be in front as he gets a brilliant exit and couldn't quite get the overlap. He's thinking about it. He's gonna try for the inside and see what he can do. So they dive for turn number one and a very big dive, big push to the rear there for Dave Chapman. He's lucky to hold on to it, but Bailey Fred is getting held up. Race leader is stuck, cannot do anything as he's got brake checks. Big contact for your race leader who shoves Naoki Oishi into a massive rollover there. So big, big contact as one of our drivers up and over a disaster there. Bailey Fred, what kind of damage has now been done to the front of his car? We'll go to a virtual racing school replay, and it wasn't particularly your race leader's fault, just a very unclear instruction from your lapsed car, which put him hard into the wall, up and over he went, and on his lid, his race is over, but Bailey Fred is in a tricky spot. The front of his car so damaged, and Chapman is back behind him, but with a clean car. Yeah, well, that's... What we just saw was pretty standard. Frid was going to throw it down the inside. The lap driver went late to the inside to try to get out of the way, and they both committed to the same piece of track at the same time. It led to destruction for that lap car, but also quite a lot of damage and time lost for Frid, who's now going left to right to left to right every single which way. He wants to block out Chapman for another five laps. I think that's going to be so difficult to do because the pressure is ramping up. Here comes Pinocchio. Here comes Asaga. Delacour, Goto, all in the picture as well. That is your six leading cars, all in a line, equally spaced. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a very intense battle. And now you have a cork in the bottle as well as Bailey Frid has no straight line speed. Dave Chapman clearly quicker now at this point in time, but where can he set the move up? Because the Pursuit Sim Racing car is not going to give him the inside at any point in the lap. Already defending it is Bailey Frid. There is no chance that he's going to make life easy here for Dave Chapman, who was so late on the brakes. It was never going to stop that on the required line, and they'll have to sit behind for another lap. But Ivan Panaccio has a much better exit, and look at him closing up on this battle as your leaders will go side by side into turn number one for probably the 20th time in this race as we work lap number 20. And look how close they are on exit as well as Chapman gets a great run. Does he think about diving into the inside up here? He hasn't tried it so far this race. Is it maybe the time to do it? He's late on the brakes, but not late enough to challenge. A saga is in this battle. Pinocchio, Delacour, a Goto as well in this battle. So your top six once again regrouped. Contact for your race lead, Frid. Holds onto it, 
and we'll go side by side, but look at the run for Ivan. Once again, it's two by two. We've got one of our cars in the grass as well, working his way towards the back end of this circuit. It's late on the brakes for Pinocchio, who dives across the other side of the circuit, but Chapman makes big contact. Fred is disposed of. He'll be dumped down the back of his pack. It's Pinocchio to the lead, as it's going to be a saga who's going to try and follow him behind. Chapman, stuck in the middle of three wide, gets dumped. Down to fourth, Fred somehow from the grass, back up to third, but as we head to just three laps to go, it's a saga in second, chasing down Panaccio. I watched that whole thing from a saga, I was keeping an eye on what he was doing, he had no idea where to go in that traffic. <laughs> the two wide in front of him, and then he's watching third place, try to pick one lane, pick the other, and he had no clue, but it got very fortunate in the end to get down the inside of the final corner, up into second, and... For the two cars that could have run away in the lead, Fred and Chapman have fought each other so hard in this race. Now they're back into third and fourth, and Pinocchio and Asaga could run away with this one with their clean cars. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure at the end of the race, they'll be both wondering what could have been. Should we maybe have, you know, attacked this race a little bit differently? Is the smoke up ahead of your race leaders? So there's a very chaotic situation just in front as they're all trying to sort each other out. I think the driver of Kobe Laszlo and Edward Leto have got themselves sorted. So they should not impede your race leaders more than uh, a normal laps car will. But race leader runs wide. A saga is going to get a great exit. Your race leader is going to bin it from the race lead. Holds on to it as Pinocchio. But he's going to go right down the back of the order as it is now going to be the dark horse all race long. Never looks super aggressive, but always patient. Hayata Asaga now leads this race ahead of Bailey Fred with a damaged car. Dave Chapman has a clean car, but Fred is going to hold him up. From 12th on the grid, Asaga is now leading the race in a 25 minute race. He's made a pass on average every about 100 seconds to get to the race lead. Picked his way through the traffic fantastically. And I tell you what, these lap cars in front of him though could be a bit of a concern. Luckily for him, Bailey Frid's already sent a very, very, very strong message <laughs> to lap cars that don't get out of the way. <laughs> Absolutely. You'd be a little bit worried with Bailey Frid coming up to overlap you as uh, we, I think, are about to head onto the final lap as well as the clock struck some 40 seconds to go as we head into the final corner. These laps only standing at a minute six. So we are right at the end of this race. It is a saga leading ahead of a very wounded Bailey Fruit and Dave Chapman. But don't count them out though, because lapped cars in front who are fighting away, not even uh, for position, they're just fighting for the fun of it, which you know, I guess they're entitled to do. But how is that going to affect your race leaders over this next 2.6 kilometers of racing? Chapman still haunting the back of Bailey Fruit at the moment, but cannot find a way through. Fruit is doing a great job in a wounded car, but look at this, the lapped car's right in the way of a saga, and they're gonna go side by side as well, potentially. So these two having a massive impact on this race, on the very last lap. At the moment, a saga would be absolutely hating this, as I think Edward Leto is gonna get out of the way, and he will be very thankful for that. Bailey Fruit will get past as well. And I think at the moment, your leaders are going to get past relatively okay. I don't think anyone's really able to challenge into the final few corners. It's a great exit for Bailey Fred, but he's too far back. Hayata Asaga should win this one despite getting defended against the lapped car. It is going to be at the end of 23 very exciting laps. Hayata Asaga from 12th on the grid, car number one, ends up in position number one. I mean, what can you say? You hope that that's the kind of race you're going to get with cars like this in a field like this, but it, it delivered turned up a hundred times because every single lap, someone side by side, all of them, uh, you know, in the top eight. There was battles for 13, 14, 15, 16. We couldn't show. We didn't have the time. Because first and second just wanted to battle every single lap like it was the last year. one of those battles coming to the line. Uh, Nisissian and Sergio. Yep, we'll see how they go across the line. I think it is going to be Dogan who is going to get that position at the end of it all. So P number 16 uh, for them, despite being in the wall, not just once, but twice, unfortunately. A very bruising race there ahead of uh, Armast as well, who will uh, bring car 17 home in position number 17. 
and they will be the last of our drivers on the lead lap. It was a very bruising race for some, but very much entertaining at the end of it all. And it was Hayata Asaga who would end up on the top spot ahead of a wounded Bailey Fritt, who did phenomenal to hold on to that spot in the dying laps ahead of Dave Chapman. What could have been for those two, though, if they just fought a little cleaner in the early stages of the race? Ivan Panaccio, who, of course, was running very high up in the championship after the first two rounds, is going to get a good haul of points to continue his charge as he finishes ahead of Jean-Robert Delacorte, Shona Goto, Chevy Pla, Darren Chun, Yasuta Shirawa, and Atsushi Uni as well, who rounds out our top 10. Yeah, Chevy Pla, huge mover in that one, as well as Hayata Asaga. So both of them in the top 10 with a very, very solid race. The rest of the grid is Togo Hisada, uh, Peter Digalovski, uh, Teruaki Kato, Thomas Burling, who started from the pit lane, which I don't think was actually the kind of penalty you normally expect pit lane start to be. Uh, yeah, Rafael, Rafael Aliasojo, Kadia Dogan, we saw them both with a bit of damage sort of battling uh, to the end there. I think Dogan must have had a slowdown penalty or something if he's ended up scored. Uh, oh, yeah, no, sorry. I'm still ahead of Aram Asad uh, Nerissian, who were the last drivers on the lead lap, ahead of Kobe Laszlo, Noki Oshibi, and Edward Leto, Mateo Richter, Radley Vaughan, and Keith Wheeler. I think everyone enjoyed themselves today. Yeah, absolutely. How can you not enjoy yourself when you've got MX-5s at Alton Park and the racing was just as intense as we saw it? That was phenomenal. With at one point, the car's actually going side by side for a lap and a half very easily indeed. It's MX-5 racing. It's always entertaining. And I think next week we're in for quite the treat as well as we head to the fearsome green hell. And I know what most people are thinking. Ah, you can't have good racing at the Nordschleife. It's an endurance track. Well, I don't think you've ever seen MX-5 racing at the Nordsch Life. David, you're very familiar with it. From VLN, it is an exciting combo. Right, it's it's a track where there's two, three, maybe four overtaking places in a GT3, but in the these cup cars, uh, these the little Mazzas, they can pass each other anywhere. They can battle side by side anywhere. Uh, they're only one step above sort of racing a go-kart, for example. There's no track where you can't get side by side and bump draft in places. Every corner becomes a potential overtaking opportunity in these cars. So even though it'll be a pretty short race, uh, my goodness, around the Nürburgring, there are corners where you can't pass in any other car that become a vi viable, valid opportunity in these machines. Absolutely. It is not one you want to miss at all. You can catch it here on SimSpeed TV next week at the same time, same place. But on behalf of my co-commentator, Mr. David Haynes, I'm Bo Albert. A big thank you as well to our director, Mr. Jay Kennedy, who did a great job on pictures tonight. But that is all from us. We will see you next time here on SimSpeed TV. This is fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rid of the outside of both of them. Maloney! Oh, oh he's taking Anderson. These guys are what I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God.